This video will be a quick summary of ways we separate mixtures. And you might recall that mixtures are a classification of matter um, where two or more compounds or elements are combined physically. That means they are not chemically combined um, or bonded together. Uh, if we look up here, we have two types of mixtures, homogeneous coffee, where the consistency is the same throughout and heterogeneous uh, with this cornflakes cereal uh, where you have an inconsistent makeup uh, over here we have an example particle diagram looks like carbonated water with co2 um, gas uh, mixed in with some water molecules and then down here is an example of uh, paper chromatography where uh, different colored compounds can be separated uh, based on their affinity for a solvent and the paper. The first uh, type of separation I'd like to review is called distillation. And you might remember that distillation is a method for separating um, miscible liquids. Uh, an example would be uh, like alcohol and water or in what we're about to see, um, acetone and water. And remember, uh, this is a physical separation. Uh, even though we might have fire um, under the mixture where there's a chemical reaction, actually what's going on in the distillation is just the breaking of intermolecular forces, which we know is not a chemical uh, uh, reaction, but a physical uh, separation. And whichever is the lower boiling point liquid is going to um, boil first. So if we have our heat source down here below the distillation flask, um, a lot of times we'll have water down here or um, a heating mantle in order to get this uh, mixture of two uh, liquids to uh, get to its first boiling point. Now, if you have um, oil, uh, sorry, if you have acetone and water, acetone has a much lower boiling point. So this will start boiling or refluxing at about the boiling temperature of acetone. And those vapors will come up and we'll start condensing on this thermometer and we'll see the, the temperature of the lower boiling point liquid on this thermometer. You might also remember that inside of here, in order to prevent bumping, there are, uh, not shown in this picture, but some boiling stones. And those will keep little bubbles so that we don't have splashing, uh, which will prevent the separation of the mixture. As this boils and the acetone first um, is evaporated, uh, those vapors will make their way to this condenser where cool water flows up from the bottom around the outside of the condenser and then flows out through the top. Uh, the cool water will allow that acetone to condense into uh, its liquid form and because of gravity and the tilt, uh, those acetone droplets will make their way down and um, land here in the collection flask. Here it looks like an Erlenmeyer flask and you'll get the more pure acetone um, landing here or the lower boiling point liquid. And eventually, if you boil this and boil this and boil this, um, it'll get up to the boiling point of water and um, the water will start boiling off and then your mixture will not be separated so well. Um, but we can do this with lots of different um, mixtures of miscible liquids. You could do mouthwash or um, uh, an alcohol water mix would work as well. Our next separation technique is called filtration. And most of you guys have done this before. Um, most commonly would be probably with cooking or even if you're at the beach and you're separating the sand from the ocean water. Um, with a paper filter in a funnel, if we pour um, a heterogeneous mixture of a solid and a liquid, the solid will remain in the filter. And then the liquid coming through called the filtrate uh, will make its way to the bottom and we'll able to separate those mixtures. Um, you might think about making pour over coffee um, or if you have like a tea bag, this would also be an example of uh, filtration. So again, um, because of the intermolecular forces being so much stronger in the solid, it stays in the solid form. And then the liquid will come through and uh, pass right through the paper funnel. Here's an example of um, a little better picture where you can see the solid and liquid and then the solid residue will remain in the paper. The filtrate is the liquid that comes through. 
The last um, type of um, separation of mixtures I want to uh, review is called chromatography. This one that we use sometimes is called paper chromatography, but there are a lot of other ones. Uh, there's thin layer chromatography, column chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, lots of ways to separate very small amounts of compounds. And this one is nice because you only um, need a very small amount of compound. And you might have seen this with like a Sharpie marker where you can separate the colors by putting this paper with say a black Sharpie mark um, and then a solvent, which we call the mobile phase, will naturally climb up the paper and it'll start dragging the compounds up. And the compounds that are more attracted to the solvent will climb up farther. Uh, the ones that are more attracted to the paper uh, will not climb up as far. So it's a competition uh, between the solid phase, which is the paper, and the mobile phase, which is the solvent. And that solvent could be water or acetone or alcohol. There are a lot of different liquid combinations you can use. Even though this is a qualitative measurement um, or a qualitative ex um, example of separation, you can do a little bit of quantitative measurement based on something called RF or retention factor for the relative um, distance that each of the, the dots moves, the center of dot, um, uh, based on how far the solvent actually climbs up. And here's another picture. Um, this is the ink spot, it's a little blurry. But you can see um, what appears to be um, a black um, ink dot is actually made up of lots of different colors that separate out. Um, when the solvent climbs up, it brings, it looks like the yellow compound. And just one note about the retention factor, um, we measure those distances from the center of the dot. And as you might guess, the overwhelming factor for how far they climb or don't climb is intermolecular forces. That's it for now.